What's up everyone, this is Shirt Talking, welcome back to my channel, and the day has finally come, they just announced it, the mystic banner that brings Evil Asylus, Virgil, and Eldon. Those three characters were expected, especially Asylus, since she is a very famous character from Saga Frontier, I still believe that is the most famous saga game in the West. So, uh, there is some good things about it and some bad things about it. The good things are the art. Imagine this is one of the best arts in the game. Uh, I also really like Virgil art. And uh, there is some new ways to play with Asylus. She was getting a little outclassed. And two new characters to play with as well. We already have the information about them since we got a Taiwanese video. Before we talk about that, let's talk about the other stuff. We will also have two new events. The first one is Try It, Virgil's Trial. That will give you some equipment medals to get old equipments and also uh, some pieces for Eldon. He has an S style. He is the only one. Virgil does not have one. So you only have his double S style, but Virgil uh, is good enough. He doesn't need inheritance. Uh, also, you can see that the status caps are the same as the current conquest, so you can farm this event, and when you finish, you can return to conquest since it's just so easy to farm there. And there is a new weapon, uh, Shadow Mystical Art Weapon, because Virgil actually equips martial arts weapons. And also, at least 200 gold pieces. That's nice, we're getting so many new styles that we need more gold pieces yeah that's it there is this information about this event then the next one is interesting because it's a community event this one says uh, share the best combo names in this community conquest and they will give us some rewards we still don't know what exactly it's that but it should be good it should be good i hope that is gold pieces or even tickets who knows it's just that. Okay, so um, now we need to talk about this new banner, and if they are good or not, uh, we're doing a preview. Okay, so here we are on Romancing Saga Reddit, in a post made by hands for a tree. Thanks again for your amazing job. Uh, he translated the changes from the Taiwanese video. This is the Taiwanese video. And we already know that Asylus didn't get any change. That's it. Not even a status change. I think they uh, believe that people will summon for her no matter what, without changes, but they did to the other characters. First of all, this version of Asylus increases the status so that we finally have a good damage dealer again. Uh, she has 104% STR. This is good, but it's not as good as the current damage dealers, but she also has a very high agility. She can even be played in some evasion strategies, depending on what you are bringing. Her intelligence is pretty high, but she's not the best intelligence buffer now. She has competition against Zosma and against the last Monica because you can inherit Mirage Step, a very important skill from the past builds of Asylus, into this one. But she's not the best intelligence buffer anymore. Okay, then with first passive, when she gets attacked, she has a 37% chance to negate all damage. This is good. 37% is pretty high. Uh, the first ties of her only had 25. Now she uh, starts the, the, the turn and she gets an increase to all of her status. 20% increase and plus 3 BP, but that's only a medium chance for doing that. So, um, this is good for long fights, getting a buff to all status, and she can just, uh, well, receive less damage and deal more damage. Plus 3 BP will help her with cycles, but it's only a 25% chance. She also gets a maximum effect increase in damage, and that is 60% increase in damage when you compare the two things, and she also loses 3 BP. LP on the start of a battle. And this is something that I really don't enjoy. Well, depending on the boss fight that you're doing, it would just not need this much. I mean, you just won't die on a fight, and it's just losing LP would not matter too much. But future characters will be able to reach as much as 60% increase in damage without this thing. So I wish they just reduced this to two or something, but they didn't change that. Right now in the game means that this girl has a lot of stacked effects. She gets 60% increase in damage, she also gets a chance to buff her status more, gets VP, invade attacks. When you see that's a lot of things together, it makes sense that they did this uh, penalty. But in the future, characters will be able to do something similar without wasting LP on the start of a battle. Then she has a 0 VP attack, critical to human, but it's only one hit, doesn't matter too much. She has a 
uh, 8 VP attack, that's both Slash and Shadow, that's good, she can use it on turn 1 and turn 3, and then on long fight she can keep using if she triggers her passive, and the last Q is a counter attack, but it starts with 11 VP Coast, that's actually the bad thing, we were expecting then to reduce this to 10, because this is not even a fast attack, although she has very high agility, it does not guarantee that she goes first, she will only counter after doing damage, so if she does not go before the enemies, you are losing chances to counter, but she has a chance to instant kill enemies with this. This has a very good value for some things, like even tower or some specific events where you can instant kill someone, but just for the damage is already good because it's triple S, but there is this problem. If you look on Tukwai, Tukwai has also a similar uh, method, she goes for a triple S counter, but she opens with the B damage AoE. So they are a little different. It makes more sense with Ascles because she goes for a single target and then counters with single target. So, well, that's it. It's a good strategy. Now looking into Ildon. Um, and Ildon has a buff to his STR, got it to 101%. He gets a change into his passive number one as well. He is now doing 20% increase in damage at all times and 30% more when it's critical. Before it was just a damage increase when critical, because he's a specialist for critical damage, but there's also some problems with that. He also has very high agility, uh, very good intelligence, he will also be able to use Mirage Step in the future by inheritance, but his defenses are not so good. Now he has Hyper Overtension, so that means that he gets 20% more and more on combos and overdrive, allowing him to get 40% at all times. He also gets the same passive, that Asilus has that can increase all status with a 25% chance and also get BP back. This is a lot of gamble. It will work well in long fights, but it's not reliable, 25% chance. His attacks are uh, this first one here that's actually pretty powerful when you look on this. It's only 3 BP for double hit and it's critical to Yundad and Demon. And here it's the problem. He gives critical damage to Yundad and Demon, but most Yundads and Demons are not weak to Slash. Uh, but they are sometimes weak to Pierce, so this will help when doing damage against Pierce weak enemies. Uh, and then the second one is a DAOE attack that can paralyze targets with small chance, but this is pretty nice because it's only 6 BP for AOE and he has a chance to trigger his own intelligence, meaning that on tower you can even retry to, he gets this buff and try to paralyze all enemies that are uh, able to be paralyzed. And again, gives critical damage to Yundet and Demon. And like I said, Pierce will hit more of them. And the last attack is Triple S, Rosario and Peyo Plus, and this attack it will be amplifiable in also the past version of Acelus, meaning that she can use this as a triple S nuke on start if you have Rosario and Pale. The good thing is that her Halloween style was a Ness style, and if you summon it for Halloween, Princess White Rose, you may have that style that can also amplify, so you can have a turn one single target nuke without chasing other styles. Uh, that means that this guy is actually powerful, uh, because his skill number one is pretty cheap and keeps doing good damage. Uh, when he gets more status, he just does more damage, And but he lacks something like a constant buff, this one is random. So, I don't know. If he can uh, give you more damage by hitting critical, or just by inflicting paralyze as well, uh, he's a nice addition to this Lash roster. Then we have Virgil, and this guy here is very, very amazing. I have to say that I will be chasing this guy. They made some changes to him, making him better, in my opinion. Some people will not like the changes. As you can see, he's a tank, mage. Yeah, 90% endurance, 102% intelligence. That's extremely high. His agility is not high, but it does not need to be. His will is 104%, so he gets top class status for 3. Yes. Endurance, Intelligence, and Will, and he gets a good volley for Charisma as well. So for passes, we have the first one that reduces direct damage taken by a 37% chance. It will also counter with Firework, and this is an AoE heat attack that will also recover 1 BP by all surviving allies. Well, so this is pretty useful if you want to get more BP for characters that have high cost. So it is pass if we can think about different strategies, like reducing the BP cost for characters that have a very high cost, like Mirza, Steelblade Light, or Leon, or Gerard. You can also try to combo Virgil with people like Noel's Daughter and UDX Genryu, or even the latest Genryu, because uh, they have that attack that can increase defense 
defense enhancement and the more we can cast that the better so uh, for very defensive strategies that can also do damage will also work then he has a second passive that gives him a morale up and guard up by 25 percent to increase damage and decrease damage received it and also recovers a very small amount of HP that should be around 150 so this brings a lot of volley so you do more damage you receive less damage and re recover a little this guy will take a lot of advantage of this very small heal because he barely takes damage because of passive number three auto wall defense decreases damage by 40 percent it's the same passive that mariah has and you guys remember mariah we have been using her a while she doesn't have such a high endurance she doesn't have such a high will she doesn't have guard up as well so when using the Zert lens x formation if you go first before your enemy you trigger an increase decreasing damage by 50 percent so imagine using that formation with virgil he received even less damage than mariah receives and mariah needs to cast the shield and use one action to decrease her damage even further if she wants but this guy will not need that and he will just receive similar damage so uh by that we have the skill number three that is a powerful attack with triple s damage and now has a chance to paralyze he does have very high intelligence so he will be paralyzing enemies with all resistance or if you need you can also buff his intelligence even further it's shadow and heat meaning that it hits two different elements the second one is a 5 vp aoe shadow and cold attack this is very similar to our luge but without this stun effect i wish they would add something here as well uh, and then the first skill is the most important to his build because this one is a C power 3 VP that deals shadow and heat and makes him enter a down stance. And this is important because let's say we are using the Zert Lens X formation. That one gives a 58% chance of the character in the front line being attacked. When you get down stance, it will just increase. And because it's only 3 VP, you start the fight, use this one, increase the chance of being attacked try to trigger the counter to buff bp to your party and then when you get to overdrive he will if he's getting attacked and he will just use skill number three to do a nuke damage doesn't even need to paralyze the target so there's a lot of things in this guy and he can well work in some very specific boss fights i don't think he's a good damage dealer at all for farming it's just a replacement if you are missing out the current best ones and uh, there is a uh, good volley with Ildon. it's just not something very special right now just tries to compete with slash damage dealers and tries to add the critical damage back into the game and the last we have Arcelos that can fill many different worlds she can be an intelligence debuff she can be a counter tank she can be also an evasion tank she can do aoe damage she can do single target damage blunt slash and heat there's a lot of different combinations and she's a good option for the time being she gets a future style as well that will be able to use skill number three on start since it goes for 12 bp so uh if people like assets it's a good character to pull off just not a triple s in my opinion because many things that she can do can be replaced by other units i really like what they did with virgil because he's now very unique and i can't wait to use him in very specific hard challenges but that's about it guys i will be making a full review of this later and probably by tomorrow but what do you think will you be summoning for this banner if you so please click here and say on the comment sections if you want to support the channel, there are links on the description. I hope to see you soon in the next video. Bye.